and here we are, wine tasting with Pete and Dave. Pete, we've got 10 wines in the lineup today, so uh, we'll get started with this uh, Rumors Moscato 2012. Okay, Rumors. Who spread the rumors? Yes. Now, this is going to be a sweet wine, Pete. I suspect lots of sugar in this. Yeah, well, I mean, having said that, you can smell the grapey sort of character that you want in Moscato. So you're looking at the grapes coming through. That's one of the things that they always talk about. The Europeans talk about what you get when you buy Moscato is the wine smells and tastes like grapes. And uh, if it does nothing else, then that's what it's meant to do. Yes, I do get a little bit of fruit in that, but there is a uh, tremendous sweetness in there. I suspect that you get more sugar than fruit. Not my pick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do we got next here? Minchinberry. Minchinberry Brut de Brut. Now, interesting, uh, Pete, the, the, the first time I tried a Brut de Brut, another Peter told me that Brut is dry, Brut de Brut is sandpaper. Okay, and was he being complimentary, you think, when he made that Brut? Well, I think so. I think so. It's a dry variety. This is uh, obviously had the bubbles injected into it. <laughs> well, Minchinbury is one of those names, isn't it? It's been around a long time and uh, synonymous with everyday party drinks, really, for a younger generation for probably the last 40 or 50 years. So mm. I Very guess cheerful. What you see is what you get, uncomplicated, yeah. pretty straightforward, and give it a nice chill and yeah it would probably work well with summer barbecues maybe not quite so well in Canberra when it's minus five overnight oh a bit cheap and cheerful I, I reckon mm -hmm. all right next one we got here on our list is uh, Salisbury 2012 Simeon Sauvignon Blanc not very distinctive um, not a lot this particular is there? wine no I mean relatively neutral I guess in a sense there's nothing alarmist on the nose there's nothing really exciting about it either it sort of just seems to be there, just a, a crisp, dry, white sort of style. Maybe not as crisp as you might want it to be in terms of what you're getting initially, at least, on the nose. Now, they mentioned on this that the grapes were picked in the cool of the night to capture some of that uh, characteristic, uh, the natural flavours. Uh, can you tell me anything about that? Well, I mean, the idea of doing that is something that, that I guess producers tend to do a lot of if the grapes are grown in, in hot areas. So the mass produced areas in Australia, the inland regions, the Riverina around uh, Griffith and, uh, and Leeton etc and also even more so where this, these grapes would have come from, the South Australian Riverlands. Basically if you want to get fruit freshness and, and cleanness and a little bit of acid into your, into your whites especially, you want to be picking them when, when it's cool. If you're picking this in the middle of the day when it's 38 degrees then you're going to get broad flabby flavours into the wine so you want to keep crisp clean flavours that's part of the reason they pick them at night. Oh, I see okay not exactly my pick of wines but uh, harmless well. enough but maybe not exciting enough to make you want to spend your dollars. No that's right. All right the next one we've got here is uh, Cherez this is a Barossa Cherez from 2011 Okay. Um, called the Boots. Uh, I'm just not sure whose boots this filled but yeah. Maybe the Kellermeister, That's whoever, whoever was in charge of the <laughs> of the vineyard. There's an old Australian story about uh, the land of the wobbly boot, but I don't know how much of that would apply to a, a 2011 Barossa Shiraz. So you're looking at a cool, wet vintage. We've yes. I think, talked about that before. There's a bit of fruit in there. Yeah. I get a bit of oak in the, in the nose, but it's just all not very pronounced. There's not a... There's not, yeah, it doesn't jump out of the glass at you, but I mean, I guess you'd pick it as Shiraz, though, looking at the, the characters that are coming out of the mm. glass when you smell it. You're getting some berry fruits, a little, little bit of spice maybe, so you're yep. thinking probably Shiraz rather than anything else. Yep, some berry and, and a little bit of spice on the palate. It just seems a little bit watered mm. down. Next one we've got on the list here, Pete, is a uh, Wyndham Estate Regional Shiraz. This is Langhorn Creek. I was going to say, what's the region? If this is regional, given the Wyndham Estate have a lot of different things, we've got you know, Langhorn Creek, so we should expect a bit of a bit of the old eucalypt minty sort of elements, perhaps. And there are some. Yes, you get that on the nose. You do. Straight away. And that's an interesting thing. Some people find that a distraction and they struggle to think of it as a character that, that, that can be complimentary or that they like, and yet other people say, well, that's what you want in your wine. And when the French talk about terroir, which is a, a big buzzword these days, 
that's one of the characteristics that they're talking about, the fact that you can pick certain regional characters and even vineyard characters from different mm. wines that you try. And definitely Langhorn Creek, you do get some of that regional minty eucalypty sort of stuff I going. I get a little bit of leather in there, very yeah. nice middle palate, <laughs> yep. and that goes on for a little while, which is quite nice. Yeah, almost, you could say, a superior barbecue red in that respect. Mm. Now, another Wyndham wine here. This is mm -hmm. uh, one of the bin series, uh, bin triple five. Now, this is southeastern Australian Shiraz. So very very select from, vineyards, these ones. It comes from all over uh, southeast Australia, which... Uh, yeah, anywhere from Brisbane to Adelaide, really. Yes. But, um, no, they do that. The bigger companies do tend to do that with a lot of their wine, in particular wine that is destined for the export market because they can't obviously use specific vineyard regions because it comes from all over the place and multi-regional uh, sourcing of the fruit tends to become a little bit problematical if you're trying to identify where it comes from so they just say well look this is our wine this is the blend we make we make a lot of it and we want it to be consistent and mm. in a good year this seems to be pretty bright fruit in this cherries definitely cherries you there. get cherries I get, there yeah. I get, yeah I get a little bit of that leather mm -hmm. sort of the wet leather yeah but you get I think you get quite ripe fruit on the nose and mm. on the palate there's quite ripe fruit character which for a, a bulk blend big sort of manufacture of big company wine you're getting some pretty good fruit in that, I think. Mm. Let's try the triple four. Another Wyndham. Southeast Australian fruit. They're not entirely original with their labelling, are they? Triple four, triple five. I wonder if there's a triple six, a devil's wine. <laughs> there is triple eight, and that's uh, Cab Merlot. Indeed. <laughs> triple four being the straight Cabernet. Now, I get a little lighter fruit yeah, character out of that. Definitely some lighter fruit characters. What vintage are we looking at here? Oh, 2010 again, so a good vintage. Funny enough, I get a bit of mint in that as well. Mm, but, um, yeah, some mint. There's Not plums. as pronounced as it was in the Langhorn Creek wine, but you'll often find that in different regional expressions of, uh, of Cabernet. And sometimes with Shiraz, but particularly with Cabernet, you get a mintiness and it could be a case of, does it come from Coonawarra? Does it come from the Yarra? Does it come from Langhorn Creek? I mean, you get mint in different incarnations in all of those regions, and uh, it's just different sort of mint. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Mm, lovely wine. A little bit mm. more tannin. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one we've got here, Pete, is called uh, White Box. This is a Heathcote 2009 Shiraz. Okay. And I suspect that 2009 in Heathcote uh, was a fairly um, uh, warm... Uh, end of the year fairly dry yeah I think uh, I mean 2009 was pretty pretty hot across most of Victoria of course mm. uh, Heathcote you do tend to have that sort of cold winters and hot summers and you'll generally get quite robust flavors in your reeds from Heathcote or well, whites as well for that matter if you I get a, see... a, a subtle uh, sort of pencil shavings a subtle yeah little bit of a that's dry... an oak sort of yeah. character as much as anything else mm. but quite lifted berry fruit as well mm. on the nose. Certainly there's there's quite a big fruit style going on there. Oh, great spice in that too. Mm. Oh, good wine with a nice chunk of meat. It would be. Mm. Added, and you're getting quite a bit of tannin on the finish, but they're quite, quite savoury tannins. They're not firm or grippy. So, so yeah. would you say that's fruit tannin? Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, grape tannin. The skin from the grape skins and... Uh, yeah, quite, quite a sort of generous sort of style. Again, lends itself then to to serving with big red meat dishes. Yep. Yeah. Nice barbecue steak. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Next wine we've got here is the Nugan, <laughs> Nugan from Nugan Kunawara. Estate. Okay. Cab Sav. I notice here they make mention of it being from a particular vineyard, the Alcira Vineyard. So they want to make this connection with a special site and a special vineyard and that sort of thing, which is something that that our winemakers are doing more of these days. Wow, there's a lot of character there in the nose, isn't there? It's there is, and again, this comes back to that minty sort of element that we talked about a minute ago, that you get mint yes. from different places. It's There's, in its own way, just as much mint here as there is in the Langhorn Creek Shiraz. It's just that it's Kunawara mint rather than Langhorn Creek mint. But Oh, beautiful ripe cherries. Mm -hmm. mm. That's a lovely wine. 
and quite soft, uh, quite soft, supple tannin. But again, definitely a Cabernet tannin structure. So, in a blind tasting, that would lead you towards Cabernet because of that that tannin, tannin structure. And then you're going towards Coonawarra because of the particular mint that is characteristic of Coonawarra. And that spent time in the American and the French oak. Okay. All right. The last of our wines here today is uh, Church Road. Okay. 2009. This be an interloper from across the ditch then. Cabernet Merlot. Okay. And they snuck New Zealand wines into this lineup. We mustn't have had any All Blacks tests recently. <laughs> They're happy to have New Zealand represented at this point. From Hawke's Bay, they can they can put out some <coughs> pretty ripe wines out yes. of that. Oh, they do. They do indeed, yes. Now, Hawke's Bay makes particularly Cabernet and Shiraz wines that compare more than favourably with anything we make in Australia. Beautiful tannin mm -hmm. and great structure in that wine. Mm. That'll go a long way. A bigger, a bigger wine, a bigger palate if you like, compared to the previous one. I think um, you look at the Nugan, the Kunawara Cabernet was a bit leaner, if you like, in relative terms. This one's a bit bit more sumptuous, a bit lush, and a bit bigger palate, I think, bigger middle palate flavours. But again, yeah, you're getting the structure, that Bordeaux structure, if you like, so the tannin structure is there, but um, beautiful, supple mid-palate flavours, and yeah, a good, good drink, that. Great wine. Yeah. And thanks again, Pete. We'll no see problem. you again next week. You will indeed.